My name is Pio de Miglia. I'm uh, moderating today this important uh, debate, press conference, by some representatives uh, of uh, Burmese people here in Japan and uh, a professor of Gakushuin University. We all uh, thought that uh, after the initial release in 2010 and after the election in 2015, uh, Burma, Myanmar, would have enjoyed a smooth path toward the democracy. Uh, they did for a certain time, but now, unfortunately, we are back uh, to a very tense and dramatic situation. Uh, reports from uh, the country are very, very tragic. People are dying in the streets. There is a regime again, a military regime, and uh, we all are looking for information and for comments and for analysis. At the professional activity committees, we decided to invite uh, uh, several people that are legitimate to talk about this. One is uh, starting from my right here is, uh, I hope I pronounce well, Cho Cho So? Yes. Yes, okay, good. Uh, board director of Union of Myanmar Citizens Association of Japan. Uh, he has been actively organizing also recent demonstrations uh, in, here in Tokyo. Then we have our old friend uh, Zhou Min Hutu, uh, a Rohingya uh, pre president of the Burmese Rohingya Association in Japan. He has been speaking on this club already in the past. And then we have uh, Professor Muranishi Michimi of Gakushuin University. They will speak in the order, I introduce them. And uh, since we are already late, I will just hand the microphone to them. Cho Cho So, please start. Uh, by the way, please switch off your phones and uh, put it in, <coughs> in, um, in uh, whatever, <laughs> silent, <laughs> silent mood. Thank you. So, uh, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Cho Cho So. I'm uh, one of the board of director of uh, Union of Myanmar Citizen Association, Japan. So uh, our association, so most of the uh, founding members are from the uh, uh, pro-democracy uh, pro activist, and and uh, we, after the uh, uh, political situation changed, and uh, the Burma Myanmar became a uh, democratization process, we have to uh, uh, focus on the social activities in Japan. Especially recently arrived uh, the Burmese citizens uh, who who needs and help. So, uh, but the situation is changed after the February 1st in 2021. So, so uh, we, uh, former activists, turned become a second time as a activist. Activist. Uh, so the situation in Burma and Myanmar is also already known about what is happening. Now. But so we, the people of uh, Myanmar, now it's called Myanmar. So very uh, tense and uh, living under the tense situations. They are not safe and worried about their daily lives since. Uh, so uh, there are uh, escalating, the situation is very escalating and the, uh, uh, the almost all the every day the people was killed and uh, so we are very uh, concerned about that situation. So I think uh, we think that we have to overcome the current situation, especially the killing the unarmed uh, civilian. So, so, so we think that what is the uh, exit uh, for for a leeway of the current situation? The the. Japanese government and the international community uh, must uh, focus on uh, to stop killing the unarmed uh, civilians. So the I think this is the uh, one of the most important thing to 
stop the killing. And the, I think Japanese government has some kind of uh, power, uh, diplomatic and uh, uh, economic, and also the political powers. The, I think uh, the Japanese government should uh, direct talk to the military leaders and the and also they have to use their uh, political enthusiasm in uh, to to work for the people of, of Burma and Myanmar and also uh, uh, the harmonized and coordinated efforts with the ASEAN members and the uh, United States and other alliance of especially currently very actively uh, working with Quad. Uh, this is the strong, uh, this is the, I think this is the stronger message to the um, military leaders in Burma. So, uh, Japanese government should direct talk with the military leaders. <coughs> So, because the people of Burma uh, do not accept the military dictators, and they also show their against the coup, and every day in so many forms of demonstrations, and so especially uh, the young ones, so called we, so everybody calls a uh, Generation Z, so. Uh, they are uh, sacrificing for their lives and the future uh, of the uh, Burma. So we, uh, we, the people of Burma, living in outside uh, Myanmar. So, so we are very concerned and always uh, every day thing, uh, contact with the situation in Burma, not only in Rangoon, but also the whole country as, as possible as we, can, we gather information and, uh, as, uh, as, uh, information and the, the facts and, di and data. So, so the international community must uh, practically to stop the killing in, in Myanmar, not only issuing the <coughs> statements or making an, not just only the comments, something like that. So, so I, I would like to say uh, oh, the only one thing is, the most important thing is uh, stop killing the everyday which was occurred in Myanmar by the uh, military regimes. <coughs> Thank you very much. So I'd like to uh, continue to my friend, Zhou Thank you. Thank you. Zhou, please go ahead. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zhou Mintut. I'm from Myanmar, the Rohingya ethnic community. I've been living here for 22 years. He's my elder brothers, and we have been working here for so long time. He's my senior, and I respect him a lot. And I'm just going very shortly, and I want to <coughs> mention here, the military coup in this year, first February, is not the first time. In our country, since 1962, we are living under the military government. And in 1962, 1988, this is the latest one. And as you all know, the military rule is not good for anyone. Not good for anyone. We Myanmar people are living under the military rule for more than 60 years, almost 60 years mm -hmm. now. Last 60 years, the Myanmar military made the, our nations and our people one of the poorest in Asia. And there are lots of human rights violations and ethnic cleansings and other the violation of international uh, law and the humanitarian law as well. Mm -hmm. Due to their 
discrimination and human rights violation, millions of people, not thousands, millions of people has been displaced in the country and uh, went to the other country to seek the refugee or asylums. It is very recent histories. Since 1st February, military coup in Myanmar, till today, almost 300 people has been killed who are not arms. The young generation, young people, older people, young children, even, even the women indiscriminately killing every day. You may see in the uh, uh, social media and even last night when I talked to one of my the elders in Yangon who are living in Yangon, they said they are very afraid of living in Yangon right now, especially in the night time. They are coming to the house to house to seek the people to arrest especially the members of the uh, political cycles and the university professors and the doctors and the, this kind of the people they are looking for to arrest. They are acting like the terrorists. They are terrorizing the whole community in the country. As you know, everyone knows, the IS did what in uh, Syria and Iraq. The same thing is going on today in my country. We are, our heart is bleeding when we see the people are killing on the streets. We cannot talk much when we remember these kind of things. That is why the CRPH declared them a terrorist military gang. It is not a national military anymore. They cross the line. They are turning their gun to their own people. How can we call them military? They're supposed to protect the, those people. Now they are killing those people. They are not the military anymore. They are the terrorist groups. When we are talking about the military coup, you may see the example of the North Korea. The North Korean people are under the, the dictatorship for so long times. The people are suffering a lot. The same things going on in my country, Myanmar. And we would like to rec the appeal to the international community. No one should recognize this the military regime, military junta, as a legal representative of our people or our country, Myanmar. We don't recognize, we, the people of Myanmar, doesn't recognize them to, be a repre to represent our country. In the international community, including Japan, should condemn in the very strongest words and sanction the military coup unanimously. The international community should not be divided when talking to the Myanmar military in a very strong, possible, the strongest possible words, in unanimously. We are very upset when we see the United Nations Security Council statements coming, coming out, even they didn't condemn because of the objection from the China. So we, Bahamas peoples are very upset on the international community. The international community should have speak directly. But one thing I want to remind you, Myanmar military as they don't understand. They don't understand any language rather than military language. I mean, they don't understand the diplomatic language because they know only to kill the people. That is why the international community should 
Now the U United Nations, uh, sorry, United States and the European Union, the British government and the other countries are putting some very small the, uh, the busy business sanctions. I think it is not enough. You need to do more, a stronger way. At least, at least United Nations Security Council should put arm embargo on Myanmar. At least. I'm not asking for the military action. If you cannot do the military action to remove the, this military from the power and put the uh, country to the people of the uh, Myanmar, at least you should do, you should consider for the mil uh, military, uh, the arms embargo, anonymously. <coughs> and it is the same military who committed genocide on the, my people Rohingya in 2017. After four years, they are committing the same crimes on the street of Yangon, Mandalay, Metila, in everywhere in the country. So United Nations Security Council must refer these militaries to the ICC. There should not be any impunity for the crimes they committed. They are committing right now. So international community should not let go on these things again and again. So our people, I mean, I, the people of Myanmar, they don't want any more the military uh, rule in our country. It is enough, it's enough. <coughs> they should stop here and they should turn over the power to the people. Under this military regime, our country's future is bleak. Heading, we are very concerned that heading to this thing, to the civil war, which would be a threat to regional and the global stability. That is why we are asking the international community, they should be very careful not to, ask, not to the, come to this problem to the other people, especially in ASEAN countries. The ASEAN countries are very softly, they are soft approaches not working anymore. They need to take some kind of firm action on Myanmar military because they, the Myanmar military is not reliable. They are threat to the human being. They are threat to the uh, regional uh, security and stability. International arm embargoes and business sanction must be in place immediately. Otherwise, they can, uh, they can prolong this thing, the killing spray in the country must be stopped immediately. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zoom. Professor Unanushi Onigashimasu. Thank you very much. Today, probably for the first time in Japan, a Burmese Buddhist activist and a Burmese Rohingya activists sit at the same table to discuss the present and the future of Myanmar. I'm thrilled to be its witness. The problems before Myanmar are huge and diverse. Since 2016, when Aung San Suu Kyi began to be called the de facto leader of Myanmar, the real de facto leader was not her, but the military that had the power to defeat any democratic progress with a coup d'etat. But the start of a new regime invited large-scale foreign aid, foreign investment, and expansion of trade, which may have caused premature and false sense of prosperity and satisfaction among the Burmese people. In fact, it was a Rohingya in the country that saw the true face of power under the cover. The Burmese military that said that they were fighting back the terrorist attacks in Rohkine in 2017 is a military that launched its troop, uh, its coup d'etat uh, for electoral fraud in 2021. The military that robbed, raped, and killed the Rohingya by the thousands in 2017 
is a military that is shooting innocent demonstrators by the hundreds. Somebody torched the Rohingya villages in 2017 and said that the Rohingya torched their own houses. Now, according to the Radio Free Asia, uh, somebody in black uniforms torched the Chinese factories in Yangon and forced the witnesses to keep quiet. The military saying that Aung San Suu Kyi is corrupt is the military that said that the Rohingyas were illegal interlopers in Myanmar and did not deserve citizenship. If there's any hope in what has happened since February 1st, it must be that the Burmese minorities and the Burmese majority tasted the same flavor of huge lies and began to learn the need for shared identity. The Burmese, including the monks, should not only resist the military, but also try to cleanse from their hearts and minds what had been ingrained by the military during the past several decades. Civil disobedience is a strategy to appeal to the conscience of actors. But the continuous killing means that most soldiers are uneducated enough to believe in what they are doing. The law of conscience should be played by international actors. Even if the whole Burmese population feel betrayed by the military, the weapons of the modern state are so strong that it may survive as long as it has foreign supporters. The military says that it has confidence in supporting a surviving foreign sanctions and it has a few friends, Russia and China. And Commander-in-Chief Mi Online, who was imposed sanction by the United States, but came to Japan several times, will count Japan as a friend. In the midst of the Rohingya genocide, Japan kept assisting members in the name of nation building. Japan took the position that it would not go with North America and Europe that blamed the people in power in Myanmar at the time. Japan defended its position so benign to Myanmar by saying that harsh criticism of Myanmar was improper because it might end the fragile and nascent democracy of Myanmar. Now, the nascent democracy in Myanmar is dead. The world should ask Japan the following questions. First, did the democracy of Myanmar die because Japan was not humble enough, not modest enough before the state crime of Myanmar during the past several years? Second, or does it mean that some other countries, such as the United States, Canada, and the UK, that demanded the end of violence, democracy, and respect for diversity in Myanmar in 2017, condemned Myanmar too much? Third, or does it mean that the past unique, convenient, and self-righteous theory of Japan that bitterness to the Burmese military will harm the democracy of Myanmar, wrong from the beginning. In fact, for a long time, Japan was sending a message to Myanmar that state criminals will enjoy freedom no matter what. <coughs> the Japanese ambassador to Myanmar, just before the start of the ICJ trial on Myanmar, said openly that he did not think that there had been genocide in Myanmar. Japan's position regarding the ICOE was that Myanmar should investigate the allegation of human rights violation and criminals need to be punished if necessary. Is it not rational to assume that Japan that try to whitewash the genocide in Myanmar will also try to whitewash a future coup d'etat in Myanmar? Is, 
in the name of preventing a coup d'etat was Japan not letting it happen. The military is an institution that must be uh, that must be planned. Uh, that must have planned the August 2017 attack on the Rohingya with considerable pre preparation. It is probably wrong to think that the military decided on this coup after the last election, because an electoral, electoral defeat was not new to the military, and the military was learning that Aung San Suu Kyi was much more useful than expected. The world is probably paying more respect to the military deserves if it understands that the coup was for the military not a matter of if, but a matter of when during the past five years. The timing must be when Myanmar's economy is so much intertwined with foreign economies that foreign donors, investors, and traders are very reluctant to go back to the past. Look at Japan. Japan set its people to monitor the last election in Myanmar and did not find any major irregularities. Why does Japan not declare after the coup that Myanmar's excuse for the coup is groundless? It is a known excuse for Japan that Japan cannot impose sanctions against Myanmar because it will lose in competition with China in Myanmar. But now the Burmese people are demonstrating, expressing its rather its anti-Chinese business feeling. This means that China may not be able to replace Japan easily, which means that Japan's sanction may be calibrated so that China cannot feel the role denied by Japan. Why will Japan divest from Myanmar? Will it stop aid to Myanmar? Will it stop using rubbish excuses that are proven useless and try to, to stand with the allies? Even in its own rhetoric, that Japan will accompany Myanmar. It has to choose between the military and the people who are losing their lives because of it. Foreign journalists often encounter Japanese who say that Japan have two channels of communication in Myanmar. One is with the government and the other is with the military. And the dead channel, which is now CRPH, identifies the Burmese um, the, the Burmese military as terrorists. The rhetoric Japan is putting up with the bad for the sake of democracy can no longer be sustained. The end of democracy in Myanmar means the end of Japan's excuses. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, <clears throat> Professor Muranuchi. <clears throat> now, before uh, starting the question flow and, and answer from the floor, I'd like to <clears throat> ask a question. Um, I heard uh, last week that you were uh, going to meet game show people uh, yesterday or today. Uh, could you uh, tell us something? Well, first, did this uh, meeting uh, happen? And if yes, do you, can you tell us a little bit uh, what were discussed and uh, how is your reaction to this? Did it happen, the meeting? Uh, yes. Yes, the, the last meeting was on the ODA, Overseas Development Assistance, the mm -hmm. worldwide, they are uh, giving by the Japanese government. And we participated in that meeting, and especially for myself, I demanded them to stop any kind of assistance, including <coughs> ODA, to the current military leaders in Myanmar. And what was their uh, reaction? They didn't. They are, they are no, there is no reaction from them. Okay. Not a proper reaction from them. Okay. And then the second question is. Uh, is Mr. In your uh, knowledge, is Mr. Sasakawa Yohei 
still involved? Is he doing something? Did he retreat? Uh, I mean, <coughs> he has been a kind of uh, unofficial ambassador to, 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 to Burma recently. So he was there during the elections. He made some statements. Is he still active in dealing with Burma or not? I'm sorry, I cannot answer the question, uh, except that uh, he is writing uh, those things in his blog. Uh, okay. But uh, I have another thing to say in addition to the first question you asked, <coughs> uh, which is that in that question, there was a, uh, in another context, there was a uh, kind of statement that people, NGOs, need to be uh, cautious about uh, unconsciously sending money for the terrorists internationally. And uh, I asked, I raised the question, now that uh, CRHP is saying that the Burmese military is a terrorist, any kind of ODA that may be sent to uh, Burma right now should be a money for the terrorists. Uh, should, uh, do you think so? And the uh, foreign ministry's answer is that the, that kind of thing is not being discussed now. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you have any answer for Sasakawa role? You know, please don't be shy. Okay, <laughs> uh, Mr. Sasakawa is very uh, good relationship with the military and and also some kind of uh, good relationship with the pro democracy uh, factions, especially in uh, in National League for Democracy. So, uh, one of my friends, I suggested one of my friends uh, to meet with uh, the Japanese uh, government, uh, especially in the uh, MS ambassador of the Miam uh, Japanese uh, embassy in R Rangoon. So, he also uh, let uh, he also act as say that. Uh, one of his uh, colleagues met with Mr. Sasakawa, and the uh, Mr. Sasakawa stands a little bit changed. Even if he recognized and uh, the election result is free and fair, and also uh, uh, the the election on on the election days, people uh, can vote freely, and uh, he has never seen that the people were threatened or something like that. So he, uh, he said the election is free and fair. But um, when the uh, military asks to convene the election in northern Rakhine state, uh, yeah. though the Mr. Sasakawa met with uh, Aung San Suu Kyi and the election uh, committee, or Union Election Committee, the UEC, and that uh, they refused to convene the election really? in uh, Rakhine State. So, so I heard that Mr. Sasakawa uh, disappointed the response from the UEC and Aung San Suu Kyi. So that's me. Uh, I think he's, he now stay uh, distant from the current situation in Myanmar. So I think that. Okay, thank you very much. So let's uh, go to the floor. Please uh, raise your hand and come to the microphone and state your affiliation if you have one. Okay, then don't go ahead. Hello, uh, my name is, I thank you for coming to club first. Uh, my name is Kantaro Suzuki. Uh, I'm a freelance and I have a question uh, about what, uh, uh, about your feelings, the personal feelings after the coups. Uh, as uh, Professor Munanushi said, uh, uh, it, sh it might be the first time that the, that the Rohingya representative and the Burma representative uh, sit down on the same table in the name of the Brotherhood and then uh, stand for the democracy. But uh, I understand there always had uh, issues uh, between the different tribes and uh, to unite uh, unif uh, unification in the one countries. But I was uh, wondering uh, if you have an, uh, some different feelings now to, toward the uh, different tribes now. So I just want to hear the answers. 
Thank you very much. <clears throat> Dozo, who who goes first? <laughs> so okay, uh, uh, I met with Ms. Mr. Zominto uh, more than twenty years ago. So we are like a friend, nothing more than that. We're the same human beings, whether we are race are different or we're religions are different. So my attitude to them is just human beings. So we have. Uh, we, we have to respect each other. Yeah. I, think, I think this is the most important thing for the human being. We can always contact with, we can always discuss with, even if we have a very different way of lifestyle, culture, and way of thinking, there's no problems. Because different is the power. I believe that. We can, uh, we can, or consolidate, or we can unite, or to our to against the, our common enemies. So the um, the enemy of Burma is the military, not us, each other. Okay. So can you? Yeah. Thank you for your question. And we used to work twenty years back. We used to work together for the democratization of the Burma. But unfortunately, the uh, last a few years ago back, uh, due to some kind of the, some misunderstanding or something like that, we didn't have the good opportunity to work together. Hope now uh, we are in the same problem. The whole nation is under the military coup, so we need to work together to remove the, this military. They are our common enemy. It is the main objectives. We are uh, doing some things. So we are, we are the Myanmar is a diverse country, diverse ethnicity, diverse religion, and uh, a lot of people. And you see, sometimes there uh, appears some kind of the misunderstanding or some distrust or something like that. But the, our main focus is military, because they are our common enemy. So we need to work together, to work hard, harder than before to remove the, this the military for the betterment of all human being living in Myanmar. It is my the objectives to do the, these kind of things. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other question? Fred? <clears throat> uh, Fred Varko, Freelance. Um, you, you mentioned the Japan response, which has been typically pathetic. Uh, but you also mentioned the EU, the US, and the UK. And reading the EU website today, they, they said their response today was robust. Um, but obviously, it's not robust. So do you have any faith in, in institutions such as the EU or the United Nations that they can actually provide an answer or help to what you want? We. We see the United States and the European Union are doing little. It's not enough. But we still hope they can do much better than this, because they are capable of to do the, these kind of things. The one, what I said before, the Myanmar military doesn't understand any language, rather than military language. So, they need to be very firm and very strong. This kind of the, uh, the, the targeted sanction, something like that, this, the business sanctions, I think it will hurt very little. It doesn't hurt much to them. We need to hit them harder, not like very smaller one. So the one we are demanding now is the arms embargo must be hard to military directly. Because when they cannot buy, they cannot get any kind of ammunition from any countries, it will be uh, effective, I think. But we are still hope they will go to the, this kind of the process uh, not later than sooner. Any other question? Sorry, can I just follow that? Oh, yes. Oh. Uh, Dozo, one of my other questions was, uh, where are they getting their arms from, and who do you want? Uh, who do you want to stop supplying them? <laughs> I mean, 
when the International United Nations Security Council put the this arms embargo, everybody must listen. Every country have the responsibility to or the the obligation not to sell, uh, not to do any kind of the arms business with the military. Who is supplying them with arms? We don't know exactly. We don't know exactly, but. There are the uh, there might be some countries, some countries like the China. Um, so can I can I chime in um, a question talking about China? <clears throat> the general narration in these days is that uh, China may be behind this coup, inspiring it uh, or supporting it or even ordering it. But some people, experts on Burma, also say that uh, that's the other way around, that China has somehow uh, uh, was taken uh, uh, by sudden by this coup d'etat that they didn't even know about, and that uh, rather they would like a democratic Burma go on because of the business they have. And everybody knows that uh, in the recent years, relationship between uh, Aung San Suu Kyi and China was very good, very strong. Just a couple of weeks before the coup d'etat, <coughs> Foreign Minister Wang Yi was in Burma and was, uh, you know, welcomed uh, triumphantly. So, what is your reading? You two reading? Is China really behind this, or? It's just the military that wants to survive forever and, and rule Burma, never mind China or America or whoever. Uh, China has its interest in Burma, Myanmar, so especially the two pipelines hmm. through the, uh, from the uh, Arkan state to the Union state. Yeah. Some, at least, uh, uh, 800 kilometer two pipelines uh, carrying the uh, crude oil and natural gas for the Yunnan uh, uh, state, Yunnan province. So uh, this is the uh, one of the uh, greatest uh, benefit for the Chinas. Uh, uh, Western states, uh, Western province f for of the uh, China need some energy uh, not through uh, not cross through the Malacca Strait but from the India Ocean and uh, Bay of Bengal to the uh, uh, Yunnan, Yunnan, Yunnan province so and also uh, uh, I think the last last year the the government of Myanmar and the Chinese uh, have a some mem memorandum to uh, construct the railway from Uni, uh, Yunnan to the yeah. Chaopu, Arakan state. This is the strategic plan for the Chinas. So I think uh, the the two pipelines are just only for the economic benefit for the Chinas. But there are this uh, there are some uh, these uh, railway construction project is uh, very strategic for to let go to the. Um, in India Ocean and Bay of Bengals, uh, very rapidly. This is the most important for the China. So, so China does not want stability in Myanmar. The, uh, the it's so using it does not want or does want. The does uh, does he it, it does want okay. They want stability. Yes. Uh, they, they, no, no, no. I no. mean, they they doesn't. They, they do not want stability in Myanmar because they use are using two sticks, using the military and using the democratic forces. They can balance and they can play these kind of uh, two sticks for for their benefit. For example, uh, when the uh, Two pipelines start running in 2014. Uh, this, and there are instability in Arakan State. That's me, uh, and also Rohingya 
problem and also ethnic mm. uh, and also Rakhine people problems. So this is the uh, Chinese are playing very uh, very finely and very uh, strategically um, playing a, a current affair of Myanmar. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, but I'm, but I'm not sure this uh, uh, coup, military coup in February 1st, is, whether it's China is conspiracy conspira or not, but I'm not sure. But well, there, there is a very big uh, interest for the China in Myanmar. So do you share this, or do you think China is behind the cup? Um, I don't know exactly, I'm not sure very much, but when I observe the situation after the coup, I think China is playing a very dirty game with Myanmar. I'm sure on that things. Because till today, the Chinese government didn't condemn the military coup in Myanmar. It means they are, uh, not directly, indirectly supporting the military coup. It is the very wrong signal giving to the world by the, a big country like China. It is really affecting our people, a struggles to go to the democratization of the country. Well, also Russia and Vietnam and India didn't uh, uh, condemn yes. Yes. The, the country. Yes. And China, as far as I know, did sign a, a, a declaration from UN to ask the government, the military junta, not to act violently against the yes. people. That is also yes. a new thing for China. Okay, uh, any other question from the floor? Peter, no. <clears throat> Hello. Um, my name is Langen from the uh, South China Morning Post. Um, I want to ask about the um, the ethnic hill tribes in um, Myanmar. The Karen people put out a, a statement uh, recently condemning the uh, military coup. And um, this has raised some speculation that this could be seen as, as a power vacuum, if you like, that the, the hill tribes, which are, uh, are armed, battle-hardened, may get involved in these protests. Um, do you have any particular concerns about that, or have you heard anything from, I assume you're talking to people within Myanmar, have you heard anything about that uh, possibility, and as I say, how concerned are you about it? Thank you. So after the military coup in Myanmar, so uh, people start with uh, peaceful demonstration against the coup, and then now it's uh, more than uh, uh, nearly f uh, nearly uh, more than f uh, 50 days has been passed, and the the temper of the people became lower and lower. Some uh, more people are uh, killed in every day and day. So the, among the uh, Burmese people, they, they, some, some kind of, some persons, especially the young ones uh, in the rural area, and also uh, in big cities, uh, young people from big cities uh, think about the response by violent mean. So and, and also there are some uh, news from the ethnic minorities, uh, arms forced arms groups, uh, so activating their their control area, and also uh, even if the, this news cannot be confirmed, uh, some people went to the ethnic uh, military, uh, ethnic minority military control areas or seeking the revenge, uh, the military, yeah. so they cannot tolerate and not at all. So uh, the situation will be more threshold. 
in the future. That's why I, so first, so stop killing in, an unarmed people. So if, if we cannot uh, stop it, so, and there will be more bloodshed in Myanmar. So that leads to the civil war, something like that, I think. Any other question from the floor, please? <coughs> Thank you very much. I'm uh, Hio Kishoda uh, from TV Astrevi Asahi. The first, uh, I have two questions. The first question, you said, you mentioned that uh, it is the first time to get together on the same table as a representant, represent of the Myanmar and the represent of the Rohingya society. But if democratization will be concluded, how will you uh, engage uh, the, to overcome uh, the, the conflict between the Rohingya and Myanmar in your country? Uh, please tell me or uh, concrete, concretely, if, pos if possible. Thank you. Zhou, or who will, uh, you go first, Zhou. Yeah. <laughs> and we Rohingya people ha doesn't have any problem with the, any person or any ethnic groups or any religious group. The, our problem was created by the system, military system, discrimination, exclusiveness. So when the Myanmar becomes a real federal democratic country with all inclusiveness, there will not be any problem. When we need to fix the system, the, we have been discriminated for so long time by the system of military. It was created by 1962 COP leader Ne Wing. Yes. And it was successively carrying on till today. We are demanding to the Myanmar people, I mean our seniors, our, the brothers in Myanmar, to overturn this system, this wrong system, to the right one. So when the system becomes right, we will not have any kind of clash or any problem. Because we all are the same people living, uh, born in there, living for there for, long, for the centuries, so there will be no problem. But the problem created by the system, the military system, the military rule, divide and rule, playing for a long time, discrimination, Exclusiveness. So when all inclusive system becomes flourish in our country, there will be no problem, I, I think, with, uh, between the uh, ethnic group. Because in our country, there are too many ethnic groups, too many religious groups, and there will be no problem, just created by the system. Thank you. Second question you had? Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Yes. Uh, it's OK. Uh, the, in, in, the, in another current situation, uh, we cannot talk, talk, we cannot discuss with the ethnic minority issue or uh, federal or democracy or freedom in, in, in Burma. When the uh, Burma became a federal state, we can sit down and discuss with the Rohingya issue. I think uh, this is a, a no problem for me because uh, we have to respect each other. We have to recognize each other, whether we are different or the same. So, but current, currently, there is not a good environment, a good situation to handle the, this, this case. So we have first. Uh, we must uh, establish a uh, federal state and and to become a stable and uh, trans uh, tranquility in Myanmar first. You have a second question, or uh, is no? it possible? Is it possible? Well, I think so, see. but we are okay. okay. Go it quickly. Anytime, see? anybody that did not ask a question wants to ask. Okay, go ahead. Last question. Uh, second question is, I watched the 
the last video diffused by FCCG last year, that, uh, maybe uh, Mr. Zoshinto, you mentioned that uh, when uh, Ambassador Maliyama and his group visit the Lakain region, uh, the government and military uh, picked up some Rohingya uh, to uh, to uh, educate, to get propaganda. The, uh, the, so do you give me some detail and how do you know, do you have, did you get uh, this information? Uh, yeah, it was uh, last year, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think in 2020, uh, 20, uh, 2019, yeah. uh, one year ago. One year ago. Yeah, and when it is the Myanmar military's very old tactics, when someone from dignitaries from the other countries or United Nations visit to Myanmar, they try to show everything is normal, everything is good to the dignitaries. Before the Ambassador Maruyama visit to Mongdo, and one week before, the military, the government collected some of uh, some people from the Rohingya and they trained them. When the uh, ambassador come here, you need to have be very neatly, you need to wear the dress, and you need to be a smile, and you need to say everything, yes, we are very good, we are very happy. So it was trained by the... When we, talk, we speak to the people on the ground, everything, we can get the information. So we, the, the people on the ground, they said, uh, about the, this kind of things. But it is not only in the Rohingya case. These cases all around the country, they, this, the military is uh, <coughs> using the, this kind of tactics. When someone go from the outside, they want to show everything is going on very well. Thank you very much. Thank I think much. that this is a pretty much uh, something that everybody now do, any country, and they want to show the best part. Uh, Peter, you want to just very, very quickly, please, because we are over time. It's just to follow up on Mr. Soy's, I'm sorry, the pronunciation is correct, I hope, of your name. But you said that the Chinese actually benefit from instability yeah. in the country. I don't quite understand that because their interests seem primarily business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So could you elaborate on that, why you think that? Yes. Uh, and normally, the, um, almost all the uh, investor or the country want uh, stability to invest or uh, have a good relationship with the nations. Uh, but uh, Chinese approved is uh, very different from the this kind of uh, way of thinking and practically uh, they are, uh, I think they are sticking so uh, because uh, they use these kind of sticks to uh, the Ar Arkan people and also they are using this kind of the, to the for example, uh, the the government of Myanmar, Aung San Suu Kyi government, and also uh, the militaries, because the military depend on the Chi Chinese government and Chinese military. So when the in the under the military dictatorships in in 1990s and and 1980s and 1990s, so. Uh, the 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 military, military just only contact with uh, the China and the military regime just only depend on the Chinese government. So uh, the the Chinese uh, Chinese influence on the military is so big, and they cannot uh, reject flatly, or they cannot refuse what the Chinese want. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, the Aung San Suu Kyi government uh, have a good relationship. Not at the same time, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi government not only rely China, uh, Myanmar not only rely on China, but also the other uh, regional powers and the other co international community. So China's are very playing very 
I think uh, I, I would say very smartly using for its uh, benefit. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, everybody. Um, as uh, thank for your participation, uh, the Foreign Correspondent Club is issuing you a one-year honorary membership. So feel free to come here and well, hopefully, in the when the COVID uh, <laughs> situation has uh, finished and uh, share your experiences at the restaurant and at the bar freely and okay. not only on the stage okay okay thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you very much thank you very much thank you very much thank you very much thank you thank you